Hey, this is Logic Writer, and today we'll be speaking with Sam. Sam has eight years of analytics experience, and today he'll take us through Hotjar, an excellent behavior analysis tool that will help us improve the content on our website. So good to have you here, Sam. Can you just tell us a bit about yourself? Hey, Alex, good to be here. I'm Sam Orbelowski, and I help business owners make their websites better. That could be by doing SEO, analytics, and reporting, or also just helping them increase the number of conversions they get on their websites. Awesome. And today we'll be looking at Hotjar. Can you just tell us a bit about the, uh, the application? Absolutely. So Hotjar is an awesome tool for discovering how users interact with your website. It does a few different things. Um, today we'll be talking about heat maps and screen recordings. So heat maps are awesome for understanding how a bunch of different users interact with your website. They'll show you the hot and cold areas and then also what viewers are seeing on your site. Screen recordings are also really useful. They show individual sessions on your website and how people navigate through the site. Um, so that's really good for kind of seeing the nitty gritty of how an individual user will act. Okay, so now we're gonna dive into a heat map of Extractor API, which is a service that Alex actually launched. We'll be looking at data from 33 users across a few different devices. So Hotjar is really cool because it lets you see desktop views, how things look on a tablet, and then also how things look on a phone. And there's three types of heat maps that they'll show you. Click data, which is where users are clicking on your site, movement data, which is where they're moving their mouse, which is actually quite different from click data, and then scroll, which is how far users are scrolling. The first thing I actually like to look at is the scroll data, because scroll gives you an overview of what everyone is going to see on the website, and it kind of gives you an idea of the first impression that people get. So the first thing is that they show you the average fold of your site. So the fold is where the average user will see the bottom of the page. Let's just go to the Extractor API and I can show you where the fold is for my browser. Okay, so the reason looking at the average fold is important is because your website looks different to different people. Here on my browser, the fold is everything that you don't have to scroll down to see. It's fast, powerful text extraction. I see that content. However, in Hotjar, I can see the average fold is actually quite a bit lower. Um, and that's good here because people see this little description of what the site does. So I don't see that on my browser, but most people do see it. And for me as a content creator, that's that's pretty mind blowing because as I'm writing this content, I'm, I'm kind of in my own world and I don't even think that people might be going on my site and, and missing some important text. Right. That's why it's so important because like you said, as content creators and website developers, we're just very stuck in how we experience the website, but it's not the experience that people have when they come visit it for the first time. Um, and Hotjar is just a really great visual way to see that. So the main thing I look at for the fold, it's clear that the website continues. So what I mean by that is you don't want your fold to end at a point where the website kind of stops. So down here, if you look at it, there's just no more content. So the user would think that the page just ends and there's nowhere more to go. However, with this fold, you see these icons down here and they grab your eye and they let you know that there's more content to the website and more stuff to engage with. So I see with the average fold, the, the icons are kind of cut off and you can't see the feature text at the bottom. Do you think that feature text should be moved up so it's it's one of the first things people see when they, they land on Extractor? Yes, I would absolutely move the feature text up just so they do see it. It's good content and it makes it look like you have a more complete product. And it also answers questions that people might have about the product. And that actually brings us to some of the other features of Hotjar. Um, we can look at the click data and the mouse activity data for this section in particular to see how people are interacting with it. I know in the intro I mentioned hot and cold, so I'll just take a second to go over that. Hot just means where people are clicking and where the activity is, and cold means where there's no activity. Yeah, I actually have a quick question. Why are people clicking on text that obviously leads nowhere? Like you see the get request right there, there's a red dot in the center. Uh, that means people are clicking there a lot, right? Sure, so people just think more things are clickable than they are. I also have this habit of highlighting text uh, while while I'm reading. You think people are doing the same? 
definitely. Yeah, that's what the mouse activity heat map is really good for as well, which we'll get into after the clicks. Um, but when people are confused, they'll click and highlight and kind of linger in an area with their mouse. Interesting. So again, more areas to A-B test. Exactly. Um, so on this heat map, you know, people are clicking this get request. So you can click that or add a little like tool tip on a hover um, that just kind of briefly explains what you're actually doing. Um, there was one other area where I saw that down here. So we know from the fold analysis that the average fold is about, the icons are slightly cut off. They're about here, right? So people aren't seeing this content right here where there's lots of clicks. So number one, just by doing that A-B test of moving this text up, you're moving up content that you know is engaging and people are reading because you know they're clicking on it. You're moving it higher and making it more visible right off the bat. So the second recommendation is add a call to action in here. Um, because there's no call to action in here and people are clicking on it, that means that it's either confusing and they just need more information on it, or it means that they're interested in it and they, they want that service that's being offered right there. That is absolutely fascinating. And it's a bit ironic that the two features um, on the left and right do have links, but the middle one is the only one that doesn't. Yep, exactly. I also thought that was super interesting. And then the other thing that people are clicking a lot is your pricing, which is really good. When you're launching a new site, it's going to be very difficult to get enough traffic to have a proper scientific, for lack of a better word, A-B test. So I always recommend making a change and then just look at the heat map before and after and see if things are drastically different or if there's a shift in where people are going. But it's better to keep making changes and see the improvement or progress than to be completely scientific because you're going to be stuck just waiting for things to happen. Right. So And that's where Hotjar can come in if you're using Google Optimize, Hotjar can be kind of that supplemental evidence. Exactly. And you bring up a really good point with the supplemental evidence. Anyone can go into Google Analytics, look at their traffic and conversion rate, but knowing how to make it better is difficult. And Hotjar lets you see how people are reacting. Um, in this example, you know, they're clicking where they shouldn't be clicking. Why don't we increase the conversion rate by just making a conversion here and adding something that's clickable? So one really useful thing to look at with click data is how people interact with the very bottom of your web page. Consumers are just very accustomed to looking at the bottom of the page to see a whole bunch of navigation for stuff that they can't get to otherwise. So let's just look at the click data for the bottom of your website. Okay, so this is super interesting. So five clicks, 23% of clicks. So here I would take this to mean that they're looking for more information. They're highlighting the text and they're trying to learn about what you do. You can write different descriptions of your product and see if there's actually less activity, which means that it's a more clear message, or you could add a call to action to learn more and go to another page. So in your example here, that would probably just be the FAQ page. Um, it's really good you have an FAQ page here. Um, you might want to even move that up into the header. Okay, so the last piece of hot jar heat maps that we're going to look at is the movement. So sometimes you'll see discrepancies between where people are and where they're going on the site. So there's an example of that here. Down here on the site, we have the extract online free. We do have a lot of movement on this area and people sort of hesitating. Um, you also see a bunch of movement around it, which likely leads to this YouTube video that's embedded here. So people want information, but then they're coming here and they're not quite ready to click and move on to the next step. To me, that's a signal that this text could actually be changed into something more descriptive about where you're going to go with the call to action. So do you think the video plays any any part in the hesitation? It's possible that the video content does not line up with what the button does and what this text does. So there could just be a little bit of confusion about the message and the next action to take here. So now we're gonna look at another feature of Hotjar. We're going to look into the screen recordings. So the screen recordings show individual users experience and navigation on the website. And they're kind of supplemental to the heat maps where the heat maps show you what happens on average and the trends on your site. A recording lets you get super granular and look at how individual people are using your site. So there's two types of sessions I generally like to look at in screen recordings. 
I like really short sessions because seeing people leave can provide an opportunity to create content that will make people stay. So in other words, they're not finding what they're looking for on your site, and we need to fix that. The other types of sessions I like to look at are sort of medium length, maybe two to five minutes, because that shows people who are engaged on your site and either can't find information or it'll show information that is really useful to the user. Okay. So this is the basic interface for a screen recording in Hotjar. There's a few important things in here. On the right, you can just see basic stats. So you'll see what country they're coming from, uh, when the recording happened, what device they're on. It'll show you the resolution as well, which is really important. This goes back sort of to our talk about the scroll map. At this resolution, you can see where the fold is, and none of that content that was visible on the average fold is actually visible here. So this is a really good example of how different users see your website differently. And then one other important thing that's shown in this session info is the refer URL. So this visitor is coming from newscatcherapi.com. Uh, one thing that's just important is that users from different URLs are going to behave differently. And that's just because they're reading something different about your website from that page. So in this particular example, there's a certain description on newscatcherapi.com about Extractor API, and that's going to color how they're going to act when they come to your website. So we're going to just watch this recording so you can get an example of how it works. That's it. That's watching a screen recording. So you can see here that they scroll down and then quickly scroll back up. So they're just kind of glancing to see what information is available. And then they're going down and exploring more of the page. So in this example, they're very likely curious about this code. They see the animation. So I think that's an opportunity there to perhaps make this area clickable. Um, it's something they're interested in. It's something they're watching. And they might want more information about it. Um, so right off the bat, we see that there's more user activity here. We see some mouse clicks and some new pages. So let's just do it at four times speed and watch the whole thing. Very active user there reading. They're probably watching the YouTube video at this point. Yep watching the YouTube video, going back. They're super interested. They're using their mouse for all the content, checking out the partners. So right now they're on the Newscatcher API site. Yep, now they're back. Perfect user, as far as I'm concerned. They're very engaged with the site. Let's slow this down and look at just a few key areas. So right there, that's a sign that they're very interested and they're trying really hard to understand what you do. If you see this behavior a lot, I would A-B test different copy to see how engaging it is and if users continue to do that. In this case, the user only scrolls through it once, which means that they probably understand it. But you might see people sort of go repeatedly through the same block of text which means that it's pretty hard to understand. Even something like putting in a call to action, like learn more at the end, they might click there and then go to a bigger article about your website. So screen recordings are super useful. One thing that I think is really cool about Hotjar is you can narrow down who you're viewing recordings of. And one thing that I think is really cool in Hotjar is you can set up polls. So we'll show an example of one of those and how you can apply it to a screen recording. So this extractor service, uh, Alex, maybe you could talk just a little bit about the difference between the API and the visual extractor and what it does. Sure. Uh, so there's two parts to the extractor API. There's the RESTful API, uh, the get requests, the post requests that you could do programmatically. And then there's the visual tool for people who want a no-code solution for extracting text uh, from articles. So that's where you just paste a bunch of URLs in, in a text box and you get the, the result and you can download it in JSON or CSV formats. 
you would think that there's two different audiences for those two products. Um, like someone who's just writing content probably wants the visual extractor, but a developer might want the API, right? Right. And this is something I've actually been kind of struggling with. Uh, I've been wondering, should I target developers? Should I target people who want a no-code solution? Maybe polls can help in this case which is why we put a poll into place on your site. <laughs> what Hotjar lets us do is just have a little pop-up here that lets us ask a question and get an answer very quickly. So people are actually pretty likely to fill these out um, if they're super simple and don't require much time. So here, we're just asking if they want the API or the visual extractor or both. So I'm gonna just say visual extractor. So here we are back in Hotjar on the polls page. This is the poll that we sent up. A cool thing that we can do is we can take this Hotjar user ID and we can go into recordings and we can filter by that user ID. You can go into your poll and you can take all the users who put visual extractor and you can view their recordings you know, just view five or 10 of them. It doesn't have to be many. And write down your notes, write what is interesting about them. And then go back, look at the poll and take people who answered the API and view their behavior. And from there, there's a few interesting things that you can do. You can see how they're different. And also just the results of the poll will tell you who is coming to your website. You might find that 90% of them are interested in the API. And as a content creator, you, you kind of hear segmentation being thrown around a lot, especially if you're working in the email marketing space, you, you've definitely heard of segmentation, but it's still this kind of nebulous concept. And once you start doing like uh, things like this, like start exploring how users interact with your site, you get a bit much better sense of why segmentation is important. Exactly. And it gives you a nice visual representation of how different users act. It's no longer just a number or a statistic. So hopefully I've given you a good overview of how you can use the various features of Hotjar to completely understand how users are interacting with your website. By using click maps, screen recordings, and scroll data, you can really understand the initial experience and usability of your website. Thanks for joining me today and hit subscribe. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. Till next time.